Today, we're gonna to be looking at the surfboard tack. So tacking a surfboard, this is a really popular technique for people to wanna to learn. Um, once they've kind of got the basics of, of, of surfboard riding under their belt, maybe they've, you know, they've got their jibes sorted, they're catching waves, and you know, the tack's a really important technique. It definitely helps you to be able to cover more ground a lot quicker. You're definitely gonna catch more waves if you can tack really successfully, if you can get up wind that much faster. So it seems like a logical one. Now, Progression has never actually made a tacking video in, in our full premium video kind of format. So I thought it was a good thing here to maybe tackle one main element of it, actually the most important element of it, and that is the kite. Now, when it comes to tacking, getting that kite flying through the sky in sync properly with your body movement is the most important bit. So if you can't get the kite flying correctly, the rest of it doesn't actually matter that much. You can get the body position perfect, but if that kite's flying incorrectly, it's game over. So we're gonna be laser focused on the kite flying today. Now, the great thing is the kite movement is actually pretty much the same, the fundamentals are exactly the same, whether you're doing a push tack or you're doing a roll tack. Both of these tacks are really important. Different people find different ones easier to start with. I would kind of say that most people probably find the push tack easier. Um, it's a bit easier to keep tension in the lines through uh, the whole of the calf. With the roll tack, which actually is probably a better tack overall because you're able to really drive the board upwind and through the whole tack. You've got to fine tune that body position and you've got to get that kite movement like spot on. Because as you roll underneath the lines, you're actually just putting a little bit of slack in. And so, you know, everything needs to be spot on. But we're not going to really go into the details of the push and the roll today. What we're going to focus on is that kite. And if you can work out the kite movement, it will be fundamentally the same for both. The great thing as well is this kite movement we're going to teach you, it's pretty much the same for when you're on a foil as well. So if you're doing any of the variations of foil tacks, the kite movement is fundamentally the same through them all. So you learn it for one and then you can just start applying it to the rest. So it is a real feel that you need to get for it. When we do a jibe, we can see the kite the whole time. When we're tacking, the kite comes up overhead and we just lose track of it. And so it's all about feel. And that's what makes it so much more complicated. So we're gonna break this down into three steps. Stage one, this is about the entry to the tack and it's all gonna be about bringing your kite up to 12 o'clock. You're coming into the tack and you're holding your course. So whether you're going riding across the wind or you're like caning it upwind, you're holding your course and that direction. Then you direct the kite up to 12 o'clock. And as you direct the kite up to 12 o'clock, you keep heading in that direction. You do not carve as you bring the kite up to 12 o'clock. The reason being that if you start to drive the kite up and then carve upwind, the kite's going up and generating tension in the lines and then you're carving away from it. And all it's gonna do is stop the kite from driving upwards and it's gonna pull hard and you're gonna go in the other direction and you're gonna, you're gonna leave it deeper in the power zone. And what we're aiming to do is get that kite directly overhead. That's the whole aim with the tack. We want the kite directly overhead so we can rotate underneath it. So this very first stage, hold your direction, drive the kite up to 12 o'clock, okay? You'll probably be like, you might sheet out slightly, you might end up about half sheeted out as you're doing this, just so you can control that power, but you wanna be able to like edging hard and really feeling like you've got some good speed and good power through that whole drive of the kite. And when I say drive the kite up to 12, it, it's not gonna, in this first stage, get directly overhead. We're bringing it up to it's 12 o'clock in the window, but it might still be a little bit back in, in the power zone. But the next stage is gonna help us get it more overhead. Okay, stage two. We're gonna sheet out and then carve hard upwind. And those two things together are gonna allow us to control that carve and pivot underneath the kite. The reason being this. So we've brought our kite up in our stage one to 12 o'clock, but it's probably a little bit deeper in the zone, power zone that we want it to be. When we sheet out the bar, that actually causes the kite to shift like this and loft overhead. Okay, so whenever you're riding around with a kite, 
if you're just standing with the kite stationary. If you shoot the bar out, the kite will loft overhead. If you shoot the bar in, it's more likely to just drop back slightly, and if your kite's not set up properly, it'll actually backstall, depending on how much power you've got and tension in the lines. So on our first stage, we brought the kite up to 12 o'clock, then we want to sheet out, and the kite will loft and come right over our head. Now we can carve. And because of the way this works, when we actually carve like this, the kite comes out ahead and it follow, follows us as we carve upwind. Very simple, two small actions. We're not worried about the body position at this point or um, actually going into the rotation. This second stage is just about getting that kite directly over our heads and allowing us to carve up wind and that kite following us as we do it. So stage three, this is the body rotation part, but importantly for the kite, it stays at 12 and it stays overhead. You're gonna be rotating, whether you're doing a push or a roll, you're rotating front side or back side. The kite is still sitting over your head. It's still sitting at 12. You're not pulling on the bar and sending it in the new direction while you're rotating. If you've done those first two stages correctly, you'll have lift at this point because you'll go into your rotation, you'll leave the kite at 12 and you'll sheet in. And it's the sheeting in with the kite directly above you that now gives you loads of lift. And it actually gives you more lift. Because you've sheeted right out, you've now got more range to sheet in and give you that lift. If you haven't sheeted out enough, you've got less range. As you come out of the rotation and your new front foot gets contact with the board, that's when you pull with your front hand. Because now you can drive that board when you get that power from the kite. You're going into the body rotation, your bar is level, you sheet in, you rotate, you get your new front foot into position, you pull with your front hand. That's stage three. You ride out, everything's good. Great, so that's your three stages. They seem pretty straightforward. I mean, that's the great thing about this. They're actually three very simple sets of techniques that you just gotta to join together. And if you can really focus on them to start with, I think you can really start to make some big strides forwards in your tacking. Focus on the kite. You don't worry too much about the body rotation. It's obviously important, but to start with, just go in and, and, and get used to flying the kite up to 12 to sheeting out and, and carving up wind. And if you're just falling backwards at that stage, that's fine, but get used to feeling where the kite is and feeling that it's over your head, feeling what's going on with the bar, that you maybe only got one hand on the bar, you're keeping it level, but you can kind of feel the tension in the bar. You can feel the tension in the lines and you're able to sort of know where it is so that when you come out of that rotation and you sheet in and you pull with the front hand, you know, you're gonna get that drive out of it. There's obviously a lot more we can go into with the tack. And we've got the two different body rotations, the push and the roll. We can talk a lot more about the actual techniques for those and for that carve element coming into the body rotation. We at Progression will cover that. Myself and Danny uh, will be going through those uh, in detail on our social medias. I hope you found this helpful. I hope you can go out now and hopefully get a little bit better at your tacks. Obviously give us some feedback. I always love to hear how you guys are finding these videos. You can drop us an email at kitesurfering at progression.me. Don't forget, we've got the Kite Surfing Volume 1 collection. You can check that out. And that's four hours worth of tutorials that will help you in all aspects of your kite surfboard riding, but not tax. <laughs> Great to chat to you guys. Thanks a lot for all your support for Progression. And I will see you next time.